are we in or on the universe? It's a question I ask in the talk, The Shape of the Universe or Your Money Back. But the answer is redacted until 2025. So what can we learn now about this question from Dark Flow? This is the third and final version of the press release. First went out in December last year and then again in January, dealing with dark matter and dark energy respectively on the basis that the Big Bang is continuing. It's a starting condition for the universe. Unless something happens to interfere with it, it will be going on. And it should be called the Long Bang, which is what this book calls it. The physics of gravity, according to Newton and Einstein, it's no new formulae, it's no new experiments, just text and diagrams based on imagination and logic. You can download the book completely free of charge as a PDF, or you can go to lulu.com and buy a print copy for just £8.25. In this earlier video from my YouTube channel, Is the Misunderstanding of Dark Energy Finally Solved? we learned where I think the edge of the universe is. This time, we're going to learn where I think the centre of the universe is. And all of this is to contribute to the shape of the universe. And we're going to find out there are two shapes. A three-dimensional shape, which is a different three dimensions, and a non-three-dimensional or topological shape. Are we in or on the universe then? Let me begin to approach this question by asking a different version of it. Is God inside the universe or is he outside of it? Now physicists will be up in arms at me introducing God into their subject and quite rightly so. I normally prefer to use fate or destiny or a spirit but Let's do that here. So the question becomes, is fate inside the universe? Or is he or she, or even they, outside of it? In the 1600s, the mathematician Blaise Pascal identified a shape for the universe. He said, it's a sphere whose centre is everywhere and whose edge is nowhere. Astonishingly, that dates back to the 4th century as an understanding. I find that unbelievable that without our modern knowledge people could have that perception. What we know of course now is that quantum entanglement completely bears this out. When two particles are entangled it doesn't matter how far apart they become. They remain as if they were two views of the same particle or as many particles as are entangled, whatever position they, they, they've been entangled in first. We can represent it mathematically. If I draw a transfinite set, so a set to represent the universe and at the centre the tiny dot to represent the singularity What's interesting about this is that on the largest possible scale, the universe goes on forever and ever and ever, but it's not interesting because it's the same over and over. However close you get to the edge, you never reach it. However far around the edge you go, you never come back because it's an infinite perimeter and because it's a fractal. What is interesting is the smallest point at the centre, because it seems as if that's the point at which certainty breaks down and gives way to probability. It's as if something else was taking over, something else was in charge. How would I represent that physically? Possibly with a Rubik's Cube. 
If you've never seen one before, when you see it in its unsolved state, it looks completely chaotic, completely random. It's only when you realise that it fits together in a particular way, absolutely perfectly, that you can see how it makes sense. Perhaps that's why they call the solution to the cube, which nobody actually knows, fate's algorithm. I'm pushing my luck there really, aren't I? But what's all this got to do with dark flow? Returning to physics then, what exactly is dark flow? I'll need to read it because I wouldn't remember. Dark flow refers to the place where giant clusters of galaxies are moving at approximately 2 million miles per hour towards a point between the constellations of Centaurus and Hydra. Not moving outwards, but rather moving inwards. But why? It could be something even more massive than everything we've discovered so far. It would need to be lying just outside the edge of the visible universe, tugging at all of us with its almost imperceptible but really quite frightening gravity. Other theories are more exotic. It could be an artefact that expanded from the original early universe. It could be a pocket universe, and so on. I think a different but perhaps more interesting idea comes from the Sistine Chapel. Because what if this is the final end point for the universe, not the point we're at now? It could be like that Rubik's Cube where this higher power we've acknowledged is in a centre that is everywhere, is also currently in a centre that is over here, out of balance, just like an unsolved Rubik's Cube is. We wouldn't have a God that is completely outside the universe or completely within the universe. We would have a power, a god, a fate, a destiny that was touching. Physically then, what about you and me? Are we in the universe or are we on it? ChatGPT, when asked about the shape of the universe, says it is flat. When asked if that means it's two dimensional, it says no, but it is flat. Physically then, whilst we're in our bodies, we are on the universe, if only because, well, everything is on itself in the universe. Mentally though, it's a different story. We're spiritual energy beings, and although we can't go there, we are touching this further space which we can't reach yet. It's a whole other story. In fact, it's a whole other book. A book called Common Sense, The Philosophy of Psychology, explores that space. Written by this guy, whoever he is. <laughs> 